Hello, Pansare, and welcome to our new video. Today I will show you some inequalities for probability and what are what is their usage and maybe in the future I will add some more examples to it. Okay, well, let us first look at so-called Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Cauchy-Schwarz inequality says, says that if you have an integral of a product of two functions, it, this integral is less than uh, the product of square roots of the integral with itself. Is, uh, this is a um, uh, norm of this function which is defined as a square root of integral function with itself. Yes, well, so this is integral f squared uh, square root times square root of integral rho squared. Uh, rho uh, I will be denoting as our density, probability density function, so its integral is 1. So over there is written that uh, expected value of some, uh, this one is this integral which is 1. This is called the rule of lazy statistician, which means that expected value of some function is just, is just this function is put over there and there is rho times this probability density times d omega, but there should be this 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 rule is a consequence of projection theorem because uh, what should be done for computation of this uh, this expectation is that you have to first find what is like capital F yes what is the uh, uh, random variable associated to this. F, yes, to find this random variable, and then you have formula for computing uh, expected value. It's just F times uh, sigma, a new uh, probability density function of F times d omega. Okay. Well, here is a picture. It's a picture of what is called. I will uh, I will refer it to later. Jensen equality, but first let us talk to it as it was just a projection, yes, let us say that phi is this function f which projects x to some y and this is another y axis of random variables, so this is random variable x and random variable i associated to x with this function. Well, uh, there is another uh, formula uh, called uh, inequality, called Jen Jensen's inequality and this inequality says that if uh, phi is convex, well, this is convex function, then this is less than, uh, if it would have been uh, concave, convex means, uh, convex means uh, uh, positively curved, yes, uh, the function is so-called smiling, yes, but if it's sad, yes, this, this hump is on the other side, I call it concave, yes, convex positive convex and negative convex I will call concave, okay. Phi of this integral is less than this, so this is called the instance inequality, so you can put phi, uh, phi or phi, uh, some function inside the, the integral and this still holds, okay, to f, not to rho, this is the, the function of integral 1. So the, the consequence is that uh, the phi of this integral, which is average integral, you are finding average of some quantity g, is less than this. Why? Because the other function f, uh, or the other function rho, is in this case 1 over, uh, 1 over omega. Why? Because integral 1 over omega alone, the omega, is just 1. So this, this, this is the function, so phi is applied on g. So this is the formula, and this means that the function of average, convex function of average, positively convex, uh, is always less or than or equal to uh, average of the function of this value. Okay, in other words, this is the formula, and this can be interpreted also probabilistically that expectation of y uh, as a function of previous. Uh, previous uh, random variable is always uh, greater than yes greater than uh, function of this if 
far is convex. If if it would be concave, uh, if it was concave, it would be it would be uh, less than. Okay, so this is this inequality written from the from the right, and the consequences in one dimension is the average of some function is always function of average is always less than uh, for concave functions, average of concave functions. Okay. Well. Well, and if so, so this is the this is the inequality. It's this inequality applied on probability. And interestingly, uh, there are some examples. And the first example is that you can basically derive Jensen's inequality, uh, Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, from Jensen's inequality, employing the the function to be x squared. If you do that. And then rename some functions, you will get the the inequality. Yes, here I've added this one integral, and then you can you can rename some functions, put this on this, and you get you get this inequality, which is Cauchy-Schwarz. Okay, there is another example, very interesting one. Uh, let us suppose that you have function x to the power n, which is convex, and you are trying to estimate what is uh, what is the nth moment nth moment is defined as uh, the average of uh, uh, nth power of this 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 function or this new function g yes uh, or, or no new function new new of variable g g is here variable okay so vari or, or it, it can be also function itself but it doesn't matter g is over there and uh, and if you if you take one over to the nth power this this inequality you will get this you will get th that average is always greater than g to the power of one over n this is true no matter of what n is however however when n is less than one the the inequality switches yeah, switches okay so uh, so if I have to write some picture of this this case, this is it. This is it. You have. Uh, uh, let us imagine that alpha is this uh, uh, here. Alpha is this uh, is this fo is this form. Then you have uh, these moments rising, okay. And uh, there is uh, like, a, and this function is. Uh, it can be it can be analytic in complex domain. It it could it could not, uh, but uh, it it's some function of alpha. So that means that if you have access to, for example, the even numbers which are easily accessible, you can compute a lot of even numbers of power, even powers, a lot of even powers, and then extrapolate between them the the odd powers yes and even zeroth power which is accessible because uh, what uh, what does it form what is the reasoning behind uh, taking a zeroth moment or to the zeroth power okay let us uh, substitute in zero and you have to compute the limit and if you do some calculation or use L'Hopital's rule you will get that uh, this and uh, zeroth moment which is which looked like one to, to the power of infinity, but um, it's basically exponential of average of logarithm of this function. Very interestingly, very interestingly is this, and uh, you can find a minimum of this, uh, but there is no none. Okay, but mm, okay, there are plenty of things. I have uh, I have uh, chosen the example from uh, from the from the video uh, of. Uh, uh, from 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 uh, th this example, yes, two points uh, on the sphere, and what is the average uh, average length between the expected length? And uh, let us imagine the integral is very complicated, and you have no access to uh, actual length because you have to take square root of distances, yes, uh, or distances square root of sum of squares with Pythagor Pythagoras theorem, okay? But this integral is complicated, or maybe complicated in four D. So you are able to find this two, two, uh, power two, power four, power six, power eight. You are able to find this, and then you can uh, perform what is called Newton's extrapolation 
to get uh, power 1 for example because this is always increasing I've shown you also this is increasing that, that means this this function monotone this function is monotone so so you are able to find even zeros from this just subtract, subtract these two numbers and uh, very interestingly and very easily you are able to find estimate for your for your integral using uh, using higher powers of this okay so I, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe see you next time in another video okay thank you